my name is Brittany with the Parker Canopin Sporland Division. This is the first in a series of videos that is going to be encompassing the thermostatic expansion valve. We're going to go over the how, what, where, why, and whens of TEVs. Before going into the application of TEVs, however, it's important to know how they come into play in a refrigeration system. For this, I will be referencing from Sporland Bulletin 10-9 and 10-11. A vapor compression refrigeration system has four main components, the compressor, condenser, metering device, and evaporator. Metering devices provide a restriction on a system. A pressure drop occurs, resulting in a colder evaporator temperature. Capillary tubes and fixed restrictors are the simplest of metering devices. A thermostatic expansion valve, which is also referred to as a TEV or TXV, is depicted in the schematic and is a more sophisticated device because it controls superheat at the bulb location. What the importance of this function is, is that it protects against compressor flood back or overheating, as well as ensuring evaporator and system performance. Metering devices should be located as closely as possible to the evaporator. And the TEV sensing bulb should be mounted to the suction line where it senses temperature. When a refrigerant distributor is present, Sporland recommends it be mounted directly to the TEV outlet. If this cannot be achieved, no more than 24 inches of straight piping should be used to connect the TEV and distributor. No elbows should be used. There are three fundamental pressures acting on a valve's diaphragm and that affect its operation. Sensing bulb pressure, equalizer and evaporator pressure, and spring pressure. The diaphragm is the actuating member of the valve, as you can see here with this cutaway view. Its motion is transmitted to the pin and pin carrier by means of one to two push rods, and is why the pin moves in and out of the valve port. This is the sole opening force. The superheat spring is located at the bottom of the valve, and the spring guide applies the spring force in the closing direction. If there is an external valve adjustment, it can permit the spring pressure to be altered, changing the superheat setting. The third force, evaporator pressure, acts in the closing direction. Any time when a distributor is used, an externally equalized TEV must be used rather than an internally equalized valve. As a general rule, an externally equalized TEV can always be used, but an internally equalized TEV should be limited to single circuit evaporator coils having a pressure drop no greater than the equivalent of 2 degrees Fahrenheit saturated temperature change. See the maximum pressure drop shown in the table. To recap, a thermostatic expansion valve controls superheat at the sensing bulb location using three pressures, sensing bulb pressure, evaporator pressure, and spring pressure. Through this function, it monitors the amount of superheat allowed into the evaporator and ultimately it protects the compressor. A TEV's equalizer pressure can be routed in two different ways, internally or externally for more complex systems. Thank you for watching Sporland's introduction videos to TEVs. Continue with more of our informational videos at sporlinonline.com.